All right. And the way that we set it up, we have plot templates that we can define that, you know, are, are kind of templates that we use. And if you want to look at the deformed or contour, they're always standard shapes. And so here I can look at a standard deformed plot, look at a contour plot, look at both a contour undeformed. And then I can also go in and make changes to these to refine it a little bit. Let's say, for instance, I don't want to look at the uh, element edges or maybe that max and min that's showing up there. I just want to see it as it is like that. We can turn off some of those entities. We definitely can turn off our loads and constraints and really work with the display. We have our contour band on the right-hand side it tells us uh, our maximum and our minimum. So our minimum displacement in the model is zero. Our maximum is somewhere up here. It's 0 0.0023. Uh, and so that's the displacement. If we want to switch over, we can also right-click here and say Edit and go in and look at some of the other contour values that we have. And now, in Nastran, we tend to give you everything that you'd ever want to look at in the model. Uh, that way you don't have to go back in and update and adjust and recalculate stresses or something like that. We just try and put them all there so you can go ahead and grab them. Like, for instance, some people like looking at principal stresses. Some people like looking at the normal stresses. I think everyone likes looking at von Mises stress. And so, for instance, we look at this model, and we can see the maximum stress is like right here in the part, and that stress value for a linear static analysis is actually quite high. It's above where the material would yield. Uh, and so if we wanted a realistic scenario, we probably would want to include nonlinear material properties. We can come in here and set the nonlinear data for that, it also lets you know that you'd have to set a nonlinear analysis if you wanted to include that nonlinear material data. So it's a good little warning. It keeps track of, of, of what's going on in the model. But for this, uh, it tells us enough. We know that if we were going to put this product out on the market, we're going to experience some amount of yielding. And you know we're not going to see high cycle, uh, large number of cycles with the part. The other thing that I, is, I think is valuable, especially in the context of reliability and durability, is fatigue. Uh, you know, depending on what you're trying to analyze, different people analyze failure a lot of different ways. And so um, some people say my, uh, my product's got to stay below yield because I know looking at the material data, as long as I do that, I'm going to experience you know, these number of cycles and that's well within the life of my product. Some people say it needs to be lower than the endurance limit on a fatigue curve. Um, with NEI NASTRAN, we also have the ability to actually run a fatigue study. Uh, it's an additional module, but we can do uh, multi-axial fatigue for low cycle fatigue and high cycle fatigue. So depending on what your needs are there, we can do it. Um, some people will just take the stresses that we're looking at here, look at the material, and that's usually good enough for them. But definitely wanted to discuss that.